The Las Vegas Raiders appear to be making big moves that will beef up that defense for the 2023 season. We're going to break this down right now. And also, are the Raiders tanking? This has been a rumor out there by some talking heads that they just may be taking L's for Caleb Williams. The Raiders need help on the defensive side of the football, and we know that they had a visit with cornerback Marcus Peters, who is actually from Oakland and grew up a Raiders fan his entire life, friends with Marshawn Lynch, and we've seen Marcus Peters to Raiders rumors before, but then it became real once he visited the Raiders this past offseason. No deal materialized. However, there is a new report out by Vic Tafer of The Athletic that the Raiders and Marcus Peters are actually still in contact right now. Marcus Peters is just testing waters and seeing what else is out there on the market, but it seems likely that the Raiders will sign the two-time All-Pro cornerback Marcus Peters and this could mean a lot for the Raiders team. It shows that Marcus Peters thinks that the Raiders could do something. Obviously, he doesn't want to waste his time and he's evaluating teams out there. It seems like he thinks the Raiders would be a good option. We know the Raiders drafted Jacorian Bennett out of Maryland. They still have players like Nate Hobbs on the roster and just gave out a contract to Duke Shelley and David Long Jr. But these are only one year deals. So they really do need true number one corner and also a true number two if, if the coaching staff fully believes in Nate Hobbs at this moment moment, I can envision a situation where you have Nate Hobbs, Marcus Peters on the outside, perhaps Tyler Hall in the nickel. He impressed the Raiders organization just last season when he was playing in the nickel. So you can have Hall inside, Hobbs and Marcus Peters, or maybe you kick Hobbs into the inside. If somebody else shows up like David Long Jr., Duke Shelley, Brandon Faison is also likely going to be a high depth chart corner because he does have a two-year contract. I think the craziest scenario could happen once Marcus Peters finally signs with the Raiders, which it seems like it's all heading in that direction. I think the craziest scenario that could happen is that the Raiders could maybe be a little out on Nate Hobbs. They didn't exactly draft that guy. He struggled with injuries last season. You have Faison already on a two-year contract, bring in Marcus Peters as another starter on the outside, and then you fill in Tyler Hall as your nickel corner because you had some good reps with him last season when he got some playing time. And that would actually be pretty crazy. I hope that does not happen because I really like Nate Hobbs personally. I think he's a great player. It can be quite possible that Nate Hobbs just has to find a role playing inside. So Colin Cowherd was talking about the fact that he believes the Raiders are tanking, especially if Jimmy Garoppolo is injured the entire season. Let's hear what he had to say exactly. This could be the least controversial, most understood, easiest tank in league history. And we've talked about this on this channel before, the, the fact that the Raiders claim they knowingly signed Jimmy Garoppolo, even though they knew his problem with his foot and that he was going to need surgery and the fact that they had that clause in the contract, which means that they could release him at any moment if he has a problem with that left foot. So if you do all this and you have no plan at quarterback really outside of Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer is 37, Aiden O'Connell is a fourth round pick for a reason, right? So if they knowingly did all this, then I do see that there can be some validity to the fact that are you really trying to go all in and win this year when you sign a guy who you know might not be available and he is pretty much your only plan if you're trying to win now. I know Raider fans, you think you can win the division. You can't. Zero chance. <laughs> that was pretty cold. <laughs> you can't. Zero chance. And look, I agree that the Raiders have the worst chance to win the division right now, but I also feel kind of tinfoil hat here. And I know I've been called the Alex Jones of Raiders YouTube. <laughs> The fact that the Raiders betting odds are so horrible this year and no one is expecting them to win just makes me think that there's going to be some way that they pull this off and a lot of people end up making tons of cash taking them as an underdog. Because think about all the cash that people lost last year when the Raiders were favorites to win so many games and they kept losing, kept losing even though they were the favorite. Tons of people lost a lot of money. But that is just crazy talk, right? There's no way that they're trying to act like the Raiders aren't going to win it and then they shockingly do it and people make a lot of money on the sports book. I think the Raiders are just actually in bad shape right now and they just might be that incompetent, which is why they don't have a stable quarterback situation right now. And when you're looking at the teams that could tank for Caleb Williams, maybe the Patriots, some people are talking about, the Commanders, but they claim they're all in on Sam Howell. They, they also have Jacoby Brissett. And then you, of course, have the Raiders as an option given the Jimmy Garoppolo situation. The Vikings might move on from Kirk Cousins next year, but with Kirk 
Cousins there. He's usually healthy. I highly doubt they end up tanking. And I would also add the Buccaneers to this list, given the fact that they're kind of rolling with Kyle Trask or Baker Mayfield. They did not invest heavily in the quarterback room. And so really the Bucks, Commanders, and the Raiders, to me, are the only teams that I could envision actually tanking, actually going all out to secure that number one or number two overall pick. We know the Cardinals are likely going to lose a lot of games, but they have Kyler Murray. The Colts are likely going to lose a lot of games, but they have Anthony Richardson. The Panthers are going to lose a lot of games, but they're already invested in Bryce Young. And you're looking at teams that desperately need a franchise quarterback. The Raiders seem like the main team that's on that list. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we definitely need to keep this in the background just in case. Let me know what you would grade the Marcus Peters signing, and let me know what you think the Raiders are planning to do this year. What are their expectations for themselves? Like this video if you have not yet. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.